All right, just to stir up some more discussion on the KF airfoils versus traditional airfoils, I would say the KF airfoils are better than traditional airfoils. Quite a few different reasons for that. First of all, at a high end speed, I think the KF airfoil, especially number four, the step on the top and the bottom, can match or exceed a traditional speed airfoil wing when it's done right, because the surface area on the top, you're, you, have, you have air slipping over an air bubble, so there's, it's frictionless. Traditional wing, you've got air going over the skin of that, that surface of that wing and there's some friction there. Now a big disservice that is happening with KF airfoils is that people are slapping them together, including myself. So the leading edges of the KF airfoils, when we make them, they're real sloppy, they're not aerodynamic, they're, they're not doing the KF airfoil justice. If somebody were to really make the front end of their KF airfoil, whether it's a KF2 or KF4, nice and aerodynamic, like you would get a store-bought airfoil wing, now we're going to see some numbers where that, that KF4 is going to for sure, I would say, in my opinion, uh, match or most likely exceed uh, the performance of a traditional airfoil wing because you've got the air over the air bubble. There's been tales out there that the KF airfoil has magic abilities. It can fly in winds that other airfoils can't in certain speeds. It has built-in stability and it's almost like it's an autopilot adjusting itself to the air. And I would have to say in my own experience that yes, flying the KF airfoils, especially the KF airfoil 2 and 4, Yes, there is some magic to it that you don't find in the other wings, the other airfoils at all. And my theory in what's going on is this, that as you have the wind coming over the top of the wing, that, that air bubble there is acting like a shock absorber, depending on the speed of which you're going. So as the plane slows down, that air bubble kind of loosens up and gets a little bit bigger. And, you know, now the air is slipping over the top of a larger air bubble accordingly. When it's going faster, that air bubble tightens up. So, I mean, this would explain why at high speeds the KF airfoils are so fast. And then when you slow them down in medium and slow speeds, where traditional airfoils start falling out of the air, these things come alive with stability and control. And that's why they can get all the way down to, you know, flat plate foamy uh, speeds and still be in great control. So it's hard to argue against KF airfoils without really having flown some good ones yourselves. And I, and I think, again, right there is a key word is that uh, a lot of the disservice done to the KF airfoils is the leading edge because we tend to make these leading edges very sloppy. So the, the more aerodynamic and beveled you know, and, and accurate you can make the leading edge of your KF airfoil, the more you're really going to see the performance it can bring out, as well as experimenting with the step sizes. I mean, if you're really trying to push some extra performance out of it. So yeah, KF airfoils, they are magic. That's why I use them on all the builds that I use because there's just nothing out there like them.